Good morning and welcome to Worship at Belong. My name is Genevieve Vertnaven, and I am one of your pastors here at Belong. Uh, as you can see, we are online and uh, we are doing this out of an abundance of caution for all of us, um, for you, for our community, as we see the Omicron uh, variant surging through um, the country and uh, through our community here in Denver. Uh, and we are grateful for your patience, for your support as we uh, as we pivot online and um, for your flexibility with this. Uh, we are looking each week to see what the best choice for our community is, and you can continue to look for communications from us in the coming days for, for upcoming weeks. Uh, on a personal note, I wanted to say thank you so much for all of your support and prayers. Um, when my family came down with COVID, um, right out of, right after Christmas, um, thankfully we are all on the mend, um, and doing much, much better. Uh, I want to direct you now to our check-in site, uh, belongchurch.org backslash uh, check dash in. Uh, and that's where you'll find our order of worship. That's where you'll find a place where you can check in and let us know that you're worshiping with us this morning. Uh, it's a place for you to share your prayers. It's a place for you to share um, if you are in need of care from a pastor or from someone on the care team. Um, it's just a great way to stay connected. Um, this is also the time that we'll be taking our offering for the week. Um, you can give online um, and you'll find the place to do that as well on that page. Um, we appreciate your generosity um, in supporting our ministries together here at Belong. Uh, and, and so now as we move into our time of worship, I would invite you to just um, move into an attitude of prayer. Move your body in whatever way will help you to center yourself and, um, and to be ready to be in conversation with our God. Uh, as I said, you can share prayers um, through the website, um, or you can share prayers in the comment section here online. Um, we would love to know the ways in which we can be in prayer with you, um, our, the pastors, uh, staff, and, uh, and, and the prayer team in the coming week for you. So I would invite you now to name those with whom we are in prayer, those um, that are in need of God's healing, those that are in need of God's comforting presence, those that are in need of God's mercy and justice. And I also would invite you to share your joys and your celebrations this week with us. And now let us pray. Holy, holy God, God of comfort, God of peace, God of grace, we come before you this morning in this new year with many of the same things from the last two years weighing on our hearts, which causes grief, which causes frustration, and more often than not what we are hoping for is for hope for hope in a new day, for hope for a new future. And God, we turn to you for that this morning. We thank you for all of the ways that you break through the hardness of what we each are going through so that we are able to see your love and your joy and your goodness in little moments throughout our day, in the message we get from a friend, in the smile of our children, in the laughter we surprise our, ourselves with. God, thank you for your presence. And we pray that you will continue to open our hearts to accepting more of you in this new year. God, we pray for all those who are sick right now. We pray for their healing. We pray for the doctors and nurses and caretakers. God, we pray for all those without homes, 
in these cold winter months. God, we pray that as your community, we will continue to look for ways in which we can make differences in the, our community around us so that no one has to sleep on the streets at night, that no one has to go to bed hungry. God, we pray that your divine creativity will weave itself through our community, that we may be able to see ways in which we can make change. God, thank you for this community. Thank you for each and every person that is here this morning with us and for all those who, who couldn't be with us this morning, God, we pray just thanks that you have brought us together brought us together in a way that helps us to know that each one of us belongs, no matter our story, no matter our struggles, no matter what the world tells us that is not good enough about ourselves. God, you tell us and you remind us to each other that we are enough. And we thank you for that, God. And now let us pray the words that you taught your disciples so long ago. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Mother, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. God, river, fly, clean.
I read an article this week uh, about scientists trying to understand how the brain works and functions, uh, and they were studying observing baby mice in order to better understand human brains and speech. And they found that the same part of the brain that's responsible for breathing, even before a baby's born, the lungs practice expanding and contracting, right? Uh, the same part of the brain that's responsible for breathing is also responsible for crying. And when babies first cry, it's not really clear if it's pain or shock or overwhelm or some combination of all of those things that causes it. But it's when our bodies, it's what our bodies do when our internal experience sort of spills outside of us. So these scientists are beginning to think that the same part of your brain that lets you breathe is the same part of your brain that allows us to cry. And in fact, it's the same part of our brain that allows us to speak and express feelings and thoughts to the community around us. Somehow as we get older, we laugh less, but we also cry less, or at, less, at least we find it less acceptable to let our internal experience spill out of us. I think that's sometimes why we avoid the experience of lament. And as we continue this series on wisdom, we're talking about lament and the ways in which sometimes we push back against it. For some, I think it's a, a fear of ingratitude, a feeling as though you're complaining and we've been taught it's impolite or, or, or unfaithful to complain about your situation. You get what you get and you don't throw a fit. I think other times, though, it's deeper than that. I think that we sometimes think of it as a slippery slope. We have a fear of being overwhelmed by the depth of the lament that we feel, that if we open the floodgates just a little bit, that it might pour on in. I'm remembering this time almost uh, a year ago, there were several moments of national lament, this recognition of what we've lost through COVID-19 and these processes of remembrances of, of those we've lost and what we've lost. I remember thinking at first, oh, this is too much. This is going to be too much. And then I, I watched and I recognized it was so important. Even I, I think the best word is cathartic, right? To be able to express these things that are painful and that are difficult, but finding a way to do that, finding a way to express it and especially to do it in community. There's mourning that's behind us. There's mourning that is ahead of us. But in our scripture, we, we find, honestly, we find the scripture is a gift in so many ways. And one of them is that scripture is our chance to be in communion with generations of those who have experienced joy and mourning, and they have sought God through it all. Scripture is us in conversation with generations before through their joy and their mourning. Our scriptures are full of wisdom, including place for our lament, place for us to express things that feel deeply broken, unfair in our lives. One of the best examples we find comes from the book of Psalms, Psalm 13. It reads, how long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I bear pain in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all day long? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and answer, O Lord my God. Give light to my eyes or I will sleep the sleep of death and my enemy will say I have prevailed. My foes will rejoice because I am shaken. But I trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because God has dealt bountifully with me. Here we find David, who's renowned for being a person after God's own heart. David, who uh, is, is responsible for, for drafting a, a number of songs, psalms, celebrations, worship, praising God's faithfulness. And so often we forget that there are so many kinds of expression of what it means to follow God, in, including those that, uh, that include experiences of brokenness and disappointment. And, and moments in which we're even questioning God's love and presence for us. If God doesn't show up, feeling like, like our enemies are gloating over us, feeling like the world is overwhelming, thinking that I don't know if I can withstand any more of this without sleeping the sleep of death. These are real 
and holy experiences and feelings that we have that don't belong deep inside of us, that at some point they pour up out of us and maybe in the way that we speak and maybe in the way that we cry and maybe in the way that we even just try to catch our breath, but we have a space and a capacity for lament. And it's not unfaithful. It's holy. There are 42 individual psalms of lament and 16 community or national psalms. In other words, our scripture, in our scripture, we find lamenting, expressing grief or sadness or longing. We find it not only for individuals, but even for groups of people. It is a holy thing. We even find that Jesus models this. Jesus on the cross is found singing psalms of lament. The most human thing that Jesus did was die, but the second most human thing that he did was to experience lament. Do you remember Jesus in the garden, in the, the book of Matthew? Jesus shows us that to lament is not to be ungrateful. It is not to be faithless. Hours before the crucifixion, uh, we see this garden scene. Jesus is praying alone. He's overcome with grief, not just spiritual distress, but physical. The scripture tells us that blood vessels in his face burst. That's how anxious he was. Uh, it, our scripture reads, He took with him Peter and two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Jesus grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. Jesus, in his deepest moments of grief, is praying and crying in deep physical agony. He's asking God to take away this duty. Let this cup pass from me. And then Jesus shows us what it is to experience lament without being overwhelmed by it. He remembers to offer it to God. Not in the way that little children offer you their trash never to be returned. No, it is a sharing. We share our heartbreak and our lament with God. We experience a deeper part of God when we are willing to offer up not only our praise, but also our lament. Which brings me back to baby mice. Now, babies we know normally cry when they're hungry. The cries help the mother to find them and meet their hunger. And even for all the new things that scientists are discovering about the connection between breathing and crying and speaking, what was known all along is that a cry functions to bring attention to the one who is crying. A cry enables mama mouse to find baby mouse and in response to hunger, offer sustenance. We share our heartbreak with God. God hears the cry of our hearts, feels the pain that we feel. And when we share that heartbreak with God, we also receive sustenance from God and we receive what we need not to be overwhelmed by the lament, but to feel it to process it, to have faith that we will receive what we need. Grace and peace.
Friends, thanks for joining us this week. A couple things to keep in mind. This Thursday night at 7 p.m., you can join us for our new Bible study series, What the Bible Says About. This Thursday, we're uh, talking about what the Bible says about the Bible, about Scripture, about the way that it works in our lives. I hope you can join us. You can find the information on our website, uh, on our Facebook page as well. Uh, also, if you or someone you love is looking forward to getting baptized, let us know. We're working on planning for uh, a safe way of celebrating baptism together a little bit later in the winter. And if you or one of your kiddos would like to get baptized, if you want to talk more about what it means to be baptized, about uh, what, what we believe and, and what that process looks like, shoot us a note at info at belongchurch.org. We would love to either get you signed up or just be in conversation with you about it. I hope you have a wonderful and safe week. And as you go forward, let me offer you this blessing. In your joy and in your lament, may God supply you with what you need. Amen. Amen.